Good morning, everyone, or almost good afternoon at this stage. My name is James O'Donnell, and I'm a planning consultant based in Galway. And I'm here to present the findings of the Infrastructure and Environment Group of 2040. So, a fundamental consideration for the future of Galway City is how should the city grow and to what extent should it grow? So, the group set about to ask fundamental questions of what should be the target boundary for Galway City and what should be the target population. We felt that the metropolitan area as set out in the County Development Plan and the Regional Planning Guidelines was appropriate. Uh, for a, a boundary for Galway in 2040. As you can see here on the screen, the brown area in the centre is the current administrative <coughs> boundary of Galway City. The uh, pink hatched area is the extent of the metropolitan area. You can see that it extends westwards to include Barna, northwest towards Moycullen, northeast towards Clare Galway, and east to include or more and towards Athenry, but there is the maintenance there of uh, Greenbelt. In parallel, we looked at a potential population. What could the population be in 2040? And we felt it was reasonable that between 250,000 and 400,000 was something that we could aim for. This is ambitious, but it's not unreasonable, having regard to official population projections which say that the population of the Republic would be 6 million by 2030 and also 2 million uh, in Northern Ireland by, by that date. We also thought that the population projection was reasonable in the context of an Institute of Engineers Ireland report <coughs> entitled Infrastructure for an Island Population of 8 Million. This report stated that 25% of the island's population, that's 2 million, would be located along a Cork Limerick Galway urban corridor. So, having regards to this population, it's of critical importance that the infrastructure necessary to support this population is both planned for and provided. The group also looked to identify transport aspirations for Galway. In addition to the Galway City outer bypass, other sustainable modes of transport are necessary. The population growth that I talk about would provide a critical mass which would enable gluas and other attractive forms of public transport to become a reality. We also felt that park and ride facilities, permanent ones, at the outskirts of the city would complement the existing implanted bus corridors. The rail station at Goron and the improvements to the Western Rail Corridor would in time generate an expansion of commuter rail and freight services to and from the city. All of these measures would enable increased pedestrianisation of the city and this would facilitate an even more attractive and livable city centre. This is just a generic image showing high-density developments alongside various forms of public transport and other transport forms. It, it can be done. Other beneficial and complementary modes of transport could include cruise liners at the new Docklands, a ferry service to and from Canberra, an intercity <coughs> seaplane service and the upgrading and expansion of Goa Airport. There will, of course, need to be sufficient infrastructure, both soft and hard infrastructure. By soft infrastructure, I mean recreational facilities and natural amenities. Natural amenities within the city environs should be more accessible. For example, the shores of Murrah along Galway Bay and Ballandooley Lake 
these are existing natural resources that are currently inaccessible and therefore underutilized. Similarly, Lakatolia is a, a resource on the doorstep of the existing city centre and is again underutilized. Designated sites of nature conservation close to the city, example SAC, Special Areas of Conservation, should have the potential to become passive amenity areas. For example, the banks of Loch Corrib. This could be a green lung into the city. We should aspire towards improved and expanded all-weather recreational facilities, indoor and outdoor, to cater for all ages and interests. Because of our rich cultural heritage, the expansion of cultural facilities will be necessary, in particular the visual arts. This would make Galway a more enjoyable city to live in in 2040. In terms of uh, hard infrastructure and energy, by way of background, it's worth noting that we pay some of the highest electricity prices in the whole of Europe. And the controversial carb gas field has only reserves for 20, 15 to 20 years. So we have to look at the renewable energy alternative. To facilitate this, there is a need to upgrade the electrical infrastructure, including a high capacity grid. This could facilitate such local projects as an offshore wind turbines at the entrance to Galway Harbour. As the natural sea resource is there, and this was touched on earlier, there should be a focus on wave energy, example the wave bob technology and oceanography research. So Galway has the potential to become a leading green city in both renewable energy research and production. We should aim towards self-sufficiency in energy. We also felt that there would be need to be improvements to ICT, including broadband networks and digital broadcasting, to enable Galway to become a sustainable competitive economy. There would need to be major improvements to drinking water quality and to sewerage infrastructure. For example, the existing sewerage network in Galway City is almost at capacity at the moment. It only has spare capacity around a uh, population equivalent of 15,000 people. So if a new treatment plant isn't provided, the growth of the city will come to a halt. This is just a, another general image showing how offshore turbines could potentially mark the entrance to the harbour. This is commonly used in a number of Scandinavian ports. This would be desirable in Goa's case as it would provide renewable energy at the source of the population and there would be reduced leakage of energy. So from a spatial perspective, where can the city grow? There is, on the one hand, a need for substantial city growth, and then there is physical and environmental constraints. This is why the development of the new Docklands and the Ardon Corridor is so important. The Ardon Corridor is a large, undeveloped area between Byr Hill and Ormore. This has the potential to become a model for sustainable planning. It's basically a blank canvas. There's a number of international examples that could be followed, but one in particular is the solar city outside Linz in Austria. In this case, there was 1,500 homes designed in a concentric plan, and all were within 300 meters of everyday amenities and facilities. All of the houses were solar powered and energy efficient. This settlement also had the benefit of an electric tram system linking the city centre so residents could avail of higher order services and uh, as well as access to employment zones. So what about the city centre? How can it expand? The city centre is a medieval core. It has a 
a, a rich built heritage uh, uh, basis. It's a zone of archaeological potential. It has a wealth of record of protected structures and architectural conservation areas. So it would be entirely inappropriate for the old city to be redeveloped. This is why the Docklands provides a real opportunity for a modern and vibrant extension of the city centre. This could potentially accommodate high density mixed use development and there could be an equivalent of a Canary Wharf or Miami Keys at a go with scale. Why not? This is um, an indicative image provided by RealSim and it shows uh, this is Long Walk there to uh, the foreground and looking out at the redeveloped uh, Docklands area. But in this image it shows how tall buildings could potentially be accommodated in this area. There's a universal architectural principle which uh, accepts that tall buildings are appropriate at waterfront locations. This is another image uh, from the existing dock uh, looking out and it also includes the iconic architectural building that uh, David referred to. Um, this profile reflects uh, a Galway hooker. But what the general image demonstrates is that tall buildings, waterfront locations, with local references, has the potential to fit in. So finally, instead of turning its back to the sea, the city should embrace its waterfront location. So these are some of the future possibilities for Galway City, which are of course subject to debate. Um, I'll now hand you back to, to Dave, and thanks very much.